Today we're sharing our library wall with Murphy Desk Project. Roll the intro. Uh, so, if this is your first time visiting uh, our channel, uh, I will link below down there and then at the end um, some other videos of ours to watch and check out and as always uh, subscribe if you want to keep in touch with what we got going on and catch up with future videos so today we're going to show uh, a little bit about what we did with a library wall in our bedroom um, so what was the reason that we, uh, we made this this library wall what was the woman well, I why do we do this we need more space we don't have I mean this was just a, a barn before we made it into a house so there's no bookshelves or um, anything like that and we needed a good space for our books and mm -hmm. I wanted a little desk where I could do school planning and um, stuff like that and I wanted it to be beautiful but also functional um, and we could also use it to store I don't know, just anything else, linens or beer bottles for your beer making, um, but mostly for books and for me to have a desk. We wanted to do this as cheaply as we could, um, but still, you know, still be nice. Um, so we made a little trip to Home Depot, just got some basic supplies. So what we got was um, just sanded plywood on both sides. Um, you can get that. Um, we got they have them in different thicknesses, obviously, but we got the. It's, it was not, it had a pretty good deal on like 23 or 21 30 seconds thick um, sand of plywood, super cheap. I mean, it's like 28 dollars or 30 dollars a sheet. So we got three of those, and then some one by sixes to build the frame that it sits on, as well as the little Murphy desk portion, and then some one by two to trim it. And that's really it. I mean, it's a little bit of paint to paint it. Um, a little bit, a gallon. A gallon of paint. But we didn't so use we didn't it. use it all. No. But uh, so we got some paint, uh, some wood, threw it in the back of the truck, and came on home. Um, so what we did first uh, is we we got the plywood. Um, I've had bad experience in the past with having Home Depot rip the plywood down into strips, just because. Um, I don't know if they just don't do a very good job of, of ripping it evenly and, and because of the, we're making bookshelves out of this, I needed them to be exactly the, the right width. Like I couldn't have some 10, some 10 and a half. Like they all had to be 10 inches wide. So so ripped them here um, with a rip fence, just a standard kind of a cheapo rip fence that you clamp down. Um, I'm going to show some video of that, of how I, how I did that. but. Um, yeah, I just ripped them into 10 inch wide strips, the whole, all three sheets of plywood. So that gave me 12 strips total. Um, and that's what we used for everything, for the sides, for the shelves, everything came out of those those strips um, that we ripped. Uh, so that ripping, uh, ripping, ripping of the plywood looks like that. All right, so yeah, after we got them all ripped out and sh into strips, um, you know, this next step is obviously not uh, necessary, but it's something that I wanted to do in that I, I routed uh, slots in the sides to accept the shelves. Um, last time I built a little other, another bookcase, and I'll show you some uh, images or videos of that um, in our hallway. Uh, I had trouble. I did not slot the or route uh, grooves for the shelves in the sides, and I had trouble getting the shelves aligned right and get them all the spacing all even and everything. It just ended up being kind of a hassle. Um, so this one, I, I was determined to put slots in the sides just to make the whole assembly process much smoother. So I ran a, uh, I built a jig uh, that you'll see on the screen. Uh, that will allow that allowed me to run the router uh, down the width of the, the shelf side 
uh, that kept the spacing even and um, and kept them square with the edges. Um, I mean, as you as you can see, it's nothing fancy. Uh, it's three pieces of wood that I just measured the widths uh, to match the width of the shelf that I wanted, um, subtracting the the distance from the edge of the router to the to the actual bit. Um, and then that's it. I just ran that down and then moved the jig over to the slot and then ran another one, moved it over to the next slot and just went all the way down. Uh, so I did that on all four, uh, four sides. Uh, and then also for the little smaller section that became the little Murphy desk and the shelf. So it was a total of six boards, four long, two short. They got those routed slots in them. So after that, after the slot, uh, slots were all routed, we sanded them down just a little bit. And then we assembled it. I mean, we just started putting it all together. Um, during the assembly process, I got to get something real quick. Don't go anywhere. Back. So during the assembly process, I, I've had this guy for a long time. Uh, this is a Craig uh, pocket hole jig. I got it, I don't know, a couple years ago. I think I, like, I saw it online or maybe like an episode of This Old House or something. I don't know. But... Uh, but dudes, I'm telling you, this thing is like the coolest lifesaver ever. Uh, it makes the easiest, best joints. I mean, for, especially for bookshelves, but I've done shelves in the kids, uh, bedroom with it. Uh, another bookcase. I mean, anything and everything I've ever jointed, I feel like I pulled this thing out because it's so easy. Um, it's so easy to you just clamp it in place, and there's plenty of videos. I'm gonna link, I'll link a a link to this below from Amazon, and then uh, maybe I'll find a, a tutorial video uh, that that I can link also that shows you how to use it. But so anyway, uh, worth grabbing, worth picking up. Uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. Uh, so that's what we used for the assembly process. I put pocket holes on the the sides to make the frame, and then pocket holes on the bottom sides of the shelves and that, that got attached. So built the frame and then just slid the shelves into the grooves um, and assembled it. So that looks like this. Don't want to forget, there's also, of course, this. The uh, most important uh, thing on any project snack time. You gotta have snacks while you're working. So thank you, babe, for that. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Um, so yeah, so we assembled it, we sanded it, um, ran into some issues. Wait, there's a beam you'll see at the final video. There's a beam in our room. Um, like a wood beam on the corner so we had to like notch the boards to get around that beam um, but you know small little things we cut it a little bit close on the installation we measured because of the spot it's going in like it it was a pretty tight fit um, all, if you're trimming it afterwards you know if like if this is something you do actually do you know whatever uh, if you're trimming it afterwards you don't have to cut it so close on the width you know because your trim is gonna hide any little gap that might be so go on the on the narrow side and don't make it so wide. I mean, I can, we had like a 90 inch space or something and I made the shelf like 80, 89 and seven eighths or something. I mean, like it was like, ew, too close. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, you give yourself some space. If you're trimming it, the trim is going to hide the gaps. So yeah, take it from me. It'll save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches if you just... Make sure you cover yourself, give yourself a quarter of an inch at least um, so you don't have to run into that headaches. So we sanded it um, and that's it, we installed it. So I built a little frame out of one by sixes because we have about five and a half inches uh, Base baseboards. So I had to get up above that so it sit flush against the wall. So um, a one by six actually was like perfect because our baseboard's like just under five and a half. Um, so a one by six is five and a half. So it was like perfect. Uh, so I made a little frame out of one by sixes and that's what the shelves actually sat on. So I bolted the one by sixes, screwed them to the, to the baseboards, make sure all that was level. And then 
just install them, set the cabinets on top, and that looks like this. Yeah, so we set the cabinets in place. Um, first cabinet on the left side went in, bolted it to the wall. Then the little Murphy desk, you know, suspended section went in, bolted it to that one. Put the corner in. Again, had some issues with fitting it in. Uh, so we had to kind of squeeze it, but that went in. It got bolted to the wall and bolted to the center section. So everything is like <laughs> stuck to the wall and everything, of course, is bolted to the, to the base too. So... Um, so again, if this is something you're going to do, uh, I cannot stress enough the importance of making sure that it is secured to the wall. The last thing you want to do is have this nice bookshelf that you've built that you stuck to the wall and then it's like, comes tumbling down. So safety, be safe, make sure you're getting into studs, make sure that you're, uh, make sure that it's square and level and that it is secure. You do not want this thing falling over. If you do it so anyway I mean this is the intent of this is not necessarily to be a tutorial um, but really just to show you what we did you know so like I am NOT a professional in any way so I'm not telling you no so I'm not telling you how to do this or encouraging you to do this because I probably had a lot of bad habits uh, you know it's, if you're using rotating equipment like a skill saw or circular saw or router you know wear safety glasses protect your hands don't wear loose clothing i mean i'm just saying all these things because if you actually do this uh because you think it's so cool because i think it's pretty cool uh be safe please 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 be safe um so yeah so that's it we installed it and then we painted it that looks like this So why did you choose green as the paint? <laughs> wow. Everything in our house is white. If you see behind me, this is like shiplap, which we actually, we did this too. This is not shiplap. This is just a, plywood. Three, a quarter inch plywood ripped down into strips that we just like stuck on the wall. So, um, but our whole house is white. Everything is white. I'll mm, show everybody at some point. Everything true. is white. I Everything mean, the main white. spaces. Um, I don't know. Last year like in may or april i painted our kitchen island like a dark green i don't know i just really started loving green but i didn't want to paint everything green but now i kind of do but no i still love white but um stop making weird faces i love eucalyptus i use eucalyptus a lot mm. um in vases and I really like the like light, it's almost like a sage color within eucalyptus and it's a really calming color. Um, but if you've ever picked out paint before, you know that when you go to pick it out, there's like a million different colors that if you're looking at them individually, mm -hmm. they look like the color you want mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but then you put them all together and you cannot believe how different they are once i had kind of narrowed it down by comparing them and realizing that some were really blue and some were really brown or had more gray that i didn't want um i feel like i finally got that true sage color that i wanted and um it's just a really calming beautiful color yeah, so anyway, we painted them green. Um, it looks good. We painted the wall behind it first. You probably saw that on the time lapse, but then the then the uh, shelves went up, painted them. And, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, so we're still decorating it. Obviously, having, um, you know, a bookshelf wall that is essentially... Um, you know, 90 inches, I guess, floor to ceiling. Uh, we got tons of 
um, space. We got tons of bookshelf space, so it's not full yet, but hopefully, uh, we'll continue to go to thrift stores and well, now we can <laughs> buy stop tons buying of books. Ebooks. Yeah. We didn't buy paper books a lot before because we didn't have space for them, and I much prefer real books. Agreed. Yeah, so before we show you the final product, um, I got some epic footage, uh, hopefully epic, of the finished product. A uh, couple things uh, to recap. I mean, fun. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it turned out... What we expected. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, b better, no, I mean, ex expectations I feel were like, met. I feel like the expectations were met. Yeah, I mean, how we envisioned it. I feel like that's how it turned out. Uh, one other thing, if you didn't see, uh, I'll link it. Uh, there's a, another video I threw up, a uh, little short, kind of little mini film of um, my son Cade walking through the woods and kind of just did this cool little thing. Um, but in that, I got to feature a patch um, from Flock Fam. Um, and I'm going to link them below in the description. Um, no, but go check out Flock Fam. They've got uh, everything from patches, hooded sweatshirts, t-shirts, um, all kinds of cool stuff. He's got lots of good products that he's actually working on, uh, putting out, that are kind of in that development stage. So he is like prime to just um, really get it. So go check him out. Uh, the website's below. Um, he's done something special for everybody who watches this video. If you use the uh, coupon code Cody K, that's C O D Y K, Cody K at checkout, uh, you will get 15% off your first order. And then he's got another coupon code that he'll send out for with anything that you buy um, to get you some more discounts. So go check him out. Uh, super cool, uh, super cool stuff. Um, so I guess that's it. I mean, project's done. We did it. Looks cool. <laughs> Uh, so again, subscribe. Uh, go check us out on Instagram. I'm gonna put I'll put all that stuff down there. Um, but that's it. Until next time, enjoy the uh, enjoy the bookshelves. Peace.